Hi, this is Lana Lisa Williams, and this is January the 11th, 2021. Yes, we survived 2020. Oh my gosh, thank God. <laughs> and I am here now to talk about 2021 on the 11th day of it. After last week, we all know what happened on January 6, 2021. And I'm wearing my bear outfit because I'm going to give you a little history lesson. As you may know, I'm an English teacher. I have actually been called English professor at a university in China. Yay, China. They appreciated me. And um, usually I just teach part time, but I got a full time job in China. And um, I also was qualified to teach history, which I've done overseas. So I taught overseas for five years because in 2010, I couldn't find a job anywhere in America. Obama was president. Our economy was terrible. So I went overseas and I first went to Russia to teach English all by myself right before winter. So I survived a long Russian winter. I spent six months in Russia from October 2010 to April, around my birthday, 2011. I could only take six months. Sorry, Russia, it's just a really bit cold. And I was living in Samara, which is above Kazakhstan in the southwest part of Russia. And it was very, very cold on the Volga River. And the Volga River would freeze solid and we would walk across it and drive trucks across it. And in the summer, that river is so wide, it's a mile across and huge ships would go on that river full of oil tankers in the summer. Can you imagine it's that cold to freeze that much ice that you can drive on that in the winter? Yeah, walk across it, ski on it. Anyway, I survived and it wasn't all that easy. They knew I was American, although I've been called Russian in a bad way by someone recently. Oh, you Russian, she called me. Yeah, well, maybe I'm a little bit Russian, a little bit, okay? And I went to Russia as an American, and they saw me, and I look kind of Russian. I'm kind of tall. I have pretty good legs. You know, Russian women are sexy. I'm Hopefully, I'm a little bit that, but only to my husband. And I was in Russia, and they knew I was American, and I didn't feel very welcome. They don't really like Americans over there. So I only lasted six months, but I learned a lot. And I'm going to give you a history le lesson. And the topic of this little video is actually, so you want some communism, right? And I'm dedicating this to AOC over there in Washington, D.C. and Ilhan Omar and the rest of the squad who kind of like communism. Socialism. Socialism kind of is cousins to communism. They kind of like it. So I would like to issue this little challenge to AOC especially and Ilhan Omar. Why don't you go live in a country that has a communist background or is currently very communist and see how that goes for you? And don't just go as a famous rich person or a diplomat, a politician, get to stay in the five-star hotels and be treated really nicely, but go as an English teacher, just a normal person who's barely scraping up enough money to survive. Yeah, try that out for a few years, five years, please. Then let us know how that worked out for you and how much we want that in America. Because I'm telling you, I was really happy to get back to America after five years overseas. So I'm going to give you a little little lesson in 1917 was the Russian Revolution and it started off with some pretty girls this is actually a Russian doll um, they're kind of expensive so I only got a little one because <laughs> I was a teacher not a diplomat <laughs> and Russian girls are really pretty they usually have kind of blonde or reddish hair and they have these lovely hats fur hats and fur coats that just match I'm not kidding. I saw all colors of actual fur from real fur from animals that they dyed like light blue or pink or orange or yellow. Yeah, and some look natural like this is kind of more natural looking, you know. But it started off with this fashionable family who were the dictators, I guess. They were really more like the kings and queens of Russia. And the communist 
wanted to get rid of them because they had all the money and all the gold and stuff, you know, and all the power. So they cut off the heads, not really. They shot and burned the members of the royal family of Russia in 1917 and took over and killed a whole bunch of aristoc aristocrats, you know, the real ruling rich people who sat around drink drinking tea all day and, you know, what were they contributing to society really? I mean, but did they really deserve to be cut into little pieces and dissolved in acid? I mean, that's kind of extreme. So bye-bye to the pretty Russian girl, although now she's made a comeback. Yay, Russia. So communism means death on a grand scale. Millions of people were killed in the Russian Revolution. And then later, under Stalin in the 1930s, millions and millions more. 55 million is a conservative number of how many people Stalin killed, sent to labor camps in Siberia, the Gulag Archipelago, which means the concentration camp on the islands. But they weren't like nice islands. They were like frozen Siberian islands. <laughs> well, yeah, people went there to die like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who wrote the book, The Gulag Archipelago, was sent over there to work hard outside in the snow. And they got shot if they didn't work. And they die from the cold and being sick and not having enough like fur coats. They would love to have a hat like this back then in those concentration camps, you know. So she was gone. And a lot of people got sent to concentration camps. And millions and millions of people died. And we don't even know how many. And so here's Russia at the top. And here's China. They have a border. Russia is the largest country in the world for land mass. Huge. It, it covers the northern part of Europe and the northern part of Asia. And even comes close to the northern part of North America. There are islands in Russia that are very close to the Alaskan islands in North America on our own continent, close to America, right? So it's so far from one side to the other that you could take a train from the east to the west and it would take two weeks to go all the way across Russia. And I wish I'd done it, you know? I only could, I was poor, <laughs> I was teacher. So I could only go from Samara up to Moscow, which was 17 hours one way on the fast train. And I loved it. I used to do it just to go up there, get off, walk around a little and come back because I didn't have enough money for a nice motel in Moscow. I would just ride the train and come back. And on the Russian train, I learned something about their culture. The people were pretty friendly. They'd bring their own food and they would share it and... They had this kind of drink. Um, it's this slightly alcoholic Russian drink that they could bring on the train without getting in a lot of trouble because you'd have to drink a lot to get, you know, drunk. And they would have tea in a samovar on the Russian train. Yeah, I have an illustration of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is a Russian tablecloth used for Easter. See the tea? That's the teapot. They call tea chai, just like they do in Turkey in Russia. Russia, chai, Turkey, chai, tea. And it's also known as chai, I think, in India. Wow, that's amazing. And there's a samovar, is the gold thing, under the teapot, which is full of hot water. And they would have samovars on the train and you get as much hot water as you wanted. Probably should bring your own tea bag though. And for Russian Easter, where they celebrate Christ's resurrection, because gosh, you know, they killed all the Christians and Jews that were in Russia back during the revolution. And in times after, they had the pogroms against the Jews, like Fiddler of the Roof, Fiddler on the Roof, <laughs> where they wiped out whole Jewish villages and pushed the Jews out of Russia. And they ended up back in Israel, which was good for them. And the Christians, they killed a whole bunch of Christians. And like Alexander Solzhenitsyn was a Christian and he was sent to Siberia. They didn't like what he had to say. Um, but then the Russian revolution dragged on. And finally, communism was sort of abandoned in the 1990s, early on um, in Russia. And they kind of went back to a sub-communist society. But they're very poor. Um, and the rich people are on the top. 
and the poor people on the bottom. There's not much in between because in communism, theoretically, you're supposed to share everything from each according to his ability to each according to his need. And that's even found in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. It says that the early Christians shared all things together and brought their goods and went to share from those who had ability to those who had need. And they lived peacefully together. But unfortunately, human nature gets in there and, you know, some people say, hey, let's just take all the stuff. We'll be up here and they'll be down there. And that's what happens with communism. Not only do they take away your stuff, they take away your freedom. They don't want you to believe certain things like religion is the opiate of the people. So bad. We'll get rid of all the religious people. So that happened in Russia, but they made a comeback and you can find the Christian celebration of Easter still going on. And here we have a cake with these letters, Russian letters, which stand for two words in Russian, which is Christos Vaskries. The X is like a H and the B is like a V. Christos Vaskries, which means Christ is risen. And they would have Easter celebration still going on today in, in Russia, and they would say to one another, Christos vas kries, vaistinu vas kries. That means Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Uh, I just love that about Russia, yay Russia. You let people believe what they wanted to believe, again, and that was after communism though. After communism, not during, okay? Because, you know, you killed off a lot of religious people and other people who were thinkers and professors and doctors. You didn't like them. You just killed them off, shot them, or sent them off to Siberia. So communism is not so good in its application and what really happens in history. So please, AOC. Hey, you don't know me. I'm nobody. I'm LLL. Lana Lisa Williams from California. Yay. Opposite side of the coast from Washington, D.C. Wasn't even there last week. January 6, 2021, I watched on the news, whatever, but I wasn't there, wasn't going to go, did not like crowds, was not a good idea. Those crazy people took over the Capitol building, bad. Shame on you guys. Coming protesting peacefully is one thing, taking over a Capitol building and smashing stuff and stealing stuff, hey, that's another. And guess what? They recognize your faces and you got arrested. You know who I'm talking to really pretty dumb. Why does Antifa wear masks? Yeah, because they don't want to be recognized. They don't want to be arrested. It's all like anonymous. So hey, if you're going to go storm the Capitol, at least wear a mask. <laughs> Duh. All right. So a little tangent there. Back to Russia. They now can believe pretty much what they want. They still celebrate Easter and other holidays. They also have Jewish holidays and and they have Muslims in Russia too. Like all the major religions, Buddhists, totally there. Um, such a big country. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad, you know, they, they like tolerate religion. Now people can believe what they want or believe what they don't want. I mean, believe not in anything. They could be atheists and that's cool in Russia, you know, and pretty much in America too, you know, it's like whatever you want to believe, you've got the right or so we think. But what happened after this capital was stormed? People got arrested. People got arrested for just being there. People got fired from their jobs just for supporting it verbally. Hey, yeah, I think going to protest in Washington, D.C. to support something political is our right as Americans. I'm for it. Those people got fired from their jobs, blacklisted. This is scary, folks, because that's what happened in Russia. And then it spread to China. Russia's up here, China's down here, share a border. Didn't take long, 1930s, 20s, 30s, for communism to trickle down into China. And I lived in the northeast corner of China, right below Russia, right next to North Korea. And here's China, three major countries, northeast border. I was there in Jilin, near Changchun, where the communism began in China. And I met a communist leader in the high school I was teaching, and they always had, all the kids had to take communism class and they all had to go march and be in the army of china which has you know like a billion members or more <laughs> and i talked to the communist leader there at the high school you know wow 
Is that what we want? To be totally indoctrinated? Yeah, okay, so China. China, oh, I almost forgot. Communism is like this, I will illustrate it. We're going back to Russia a little bit. This is a famous, I hope it's straight. This is a famous Russian doll. A doll inside of a doll inside of a doll inside of a doll. <laughs> and it's like the number one best-selling thing you can buy at a tourist shop in Russia. Oh, I've got it backwards. <laughs> Here's the doll. That was her backside. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's the doll. Okay, she's cute, right? Kind of like the one I first showed you. And inside, you open it up. And there's another doll. This is like communism. It looks pretty on the outside, you know? Hey, yeah, that's what it is. Open it up, there's other stuff in there. Like, you can open her up and keep going. There's another smaller doll. Wow, it's like, how many, six or something? <laughs> then there's another doll. And then this one becomes even the smallest little baby doll. I mean, it's cute, it's harmless, right? But it's got stuff we didn't see on the outside. What if it was a bomb in there? Black death, something awful. I say to you, like communism, like this Russian doll thing. Forget the Russian name, let me know, I forget it, okay. Um, communism hides things. And maybe you won't know till later that you're gonna be sent off to a camp because you disagreed with someone or you read something they didn't approve of or you wrote something they didn't approve of. Freedom of speech is very important. Once that starts to go, freedom of the press goes. You can't write what you want anymore. What happened to freedom of press in America? <laughs> what happened? Freedom of religion starts going. They don't want you to believe certain things. Freedom to peacefully gather together in protest starts to go. So all those, I don't know, million of people that were in Washington, D.C. just standing there waving flags, they are going to be criminals now. They didn't have the right to peacefully gather to protest. It was a small amount, probably led by Antifa, who got into the Capitol building. That was a bad thing for them to do. They shouldn't have done that broken windows and doors and stolen stuff. But what about that guy, that security guard who opened the doors for them, said, come in, come in. What about him on the videos? He's like, come in, I will move the barrier out of your way. I will usher you in like I'm, I'm this uh, bellboy at the hotel. <laughs> come in, have a look. What about that guy? What was he doing? Was this like an inside job? Who's paying for this? Where is this going to take America? Are we going to be like Russia and China? Are we going to be the cute little doll that really is a bomb that's going to explode in our faces? Is it going to be one thing inside of another, inside of another, until we don't know what's happening or what's inside? Okay, Russia. I think that's it for my Russian. Oh, one more thing. I've got to show you this. My Russian egg comes in a red box because, you know, communism and red go together. Like there's red in the Russian flag. It used to be more red. <laughs> and um, red is a symbol for blood. Communism is a symbol for blood. Here is my little egg. It's a 3D engraving of the huge Russian Orthodox Church that sits on Red Square in Moscow where I've been and just had to show you. Look, it looks pretty against the blue. Because Russia can make beautiful things. I mean, wow, look at this egg. It's so beautiful. It makes me want to go back. I really liked Red Square. It was so impressive. I walked around. It was raining. took photos. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> totally impressive. Russia impressed me. It was very cold. The food wasn't so good. I could only eat so much salted fish in the winter, okay? <laughs> So I went from Russia to Turkey and then to China. We started off talking about China a little. Well, Russia first and then China. So now, is there anything else I want to share about Russia? I don't think so. Let's get to China. 
I have this Chinese scarf. It's 100% silk. It's really beautiful. And it's reversible. Like, it's on this side, it's mostly red. And on the other side, it's mostly stuck. <laughs> no, mostly purple. The little circles. It's really cool. This is from China. China has beautiful things and an over 6,000-year continuous history. And like most countries in the world, except Israel has an almost 6,000 continuous history also. China invented a lot of stuff we use every day, glasses, tea, books, <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff. A lot of medicine is really good. And China has really beautiful handcrafted stuff like this. Oops. <laughs> this was given to me by a friend in China, and it's a paper cutting with beautiful mounted as paper that's been cut. Paper cutting is an art form, and it's mounted with beautiful letters. And I really like this. Thanks, Jenny. There are some really good people in China I miss, like Jenny. Her real name is not Jenny, but that's how she went by. I love you, Jenny. I miss you. Miss Jillian, <laughs> how are you doing? Okay. And then this is also something I found in China. Oh, yeah. Russia has a big problem with vodka and alcoholism. And remember this. So I noticed China does also. This is Baijiu. There's none in it. But Baijiu is like the cheap alcoholic drink people drink at the Chinese train stations <laughs> or street corners. <laughs> really cheap. And it's like really alcoholic like vodka. It was sad to see so many people needing to drink this in China. Okay. Am I missing anything? Oh, yeah. Of course, tea. Nothing like Chinese tea. I love the dragon symbol on this tea set from China. Um, in Chinese mythology, dragons are good. They are not bad, and they don't necessarily breathe out fire, and they never fly, or hardly ever. So they're way different than the Western idea of a dragon, like from England, you know, which is a big mean thing with wings and fire and kills you because dragons are pretty lucky in Chinese mythology and history. So this is really beautiful. I love the blue and gold combination in the colors. All right, I think that kind of wraps up, <laughs> wraps up China uh, for the stuff I need to show you. Back to communism. So communism went from Russia down into China in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, you know. And there was a big revolution in China, and millions of people were killed. And those who wanted to preserve their democracy went to the people, to uh, democratic Taiwan, which is an island below mainland communist China. And communist China isn't as large Geographically, as Russia, it's about the same size as the United States of America. Really. Go look at it. <laughs> so China has China, and it is a very big country from the west to the east, north to the south. And Taiwan is an island in the sea below, okay? And they want to maintain their independence as a democracy, and China, communist China, wants to take over them. And Hong Kong. Hong Kong's kind of a little bit of... It's, Hong Kong was owned by Britain, but they gave it back to China. And now, if you heard the news, China recently arrested 50 protesters in Hong Kong, put them in prison, just for protesting communism, taking over their city of Hong Kong, which is supposed to, which they wanted to keep as a democracy. What does that say about communism? It puts people in prison. It shuts people up. Permanently, a lot of the times. What's going on in China that really bugs me is the Uyghur people. They're from the west part of China. They are type of Turkish people. I met some. I could talk to them face to face, which I did because I speak Turkish. And those people are Muslims and the Chinese have been putting them in concentration camps like Hitler did in Germany 
in the 1930s and 40s, World War II, you know that story. How many millions of Jews, maybe 5 million Jews were killed? How many millions of Uyghurs are being killed, reindoctrinated, brainwashed, tortured into giving up their religion they chose to believe in for communism, separated from their families, and the worst thing is they're being slaughtered for their organs. Their organs are being harvested. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be banned in China. Communism does that. It bans things. Is that happening in America? Are people getting fired who were just peacefully gathering in Washington, D.C. last Tuesday, the 6th of January, 2021? Are people getting fired just for liking a post about it? Is this communism in action? Think about it. Is that where we want to go? So, it was a problem. The Uyghurs are a problem. I hope they find a little respect for their religion, for their freedom to believe what they want. Is communism just going to give that to them, you think? Have you ever been in a communist prison? Okay, we're going to Turkey now because here's China. Turkey's like over here on the Mediterranean and, you know, they're not that far apart. <laughs> not really. I have a t Turkish flag. I lived there two and a half years, longest place I lived when I was overseas for five years. And I just, I kind of like their flag. Oh, I think it's backwards. <laughs> All right. It says, a moon and a star. In Turkish, this is I. I means moon. Yildiz. Yildiz means star. And you see this pattern repeated in a lot of Islamic countries who have a history with Muslim religion, which has been around since, you know, like the 800s. And um, so what was wrong with Turkey? Turkey was a dictatorship. I protested for freedom with Turks in 2013 and got chased by Turkish police in Istanbul. And I remember hearing their boots behind me on the cobblestones as I ran away, having been pepper sprayed in my face, just as a teacher from America watching what was happening. I didn't protest even, I was just there. And they chased a group of us teachers away, pepper sprayed us, they would have arrested us if they caught us. We ducked into a hotel on the side, which had a cafe, and the hotel owner gave us um, a towel to put over our, to wipe the pepper spray off our faces. He said, "Don't put water on it; it'll just make it worse. Just wipe it away with a towel, a dry towel." So you know, hey, dictatorships don't want people to think what they want to think, or say, or write what they want to speak or publish. They don't want them to believe what they want to believe. And Erdogan, the I call him dictator Erdogan. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, is a dictator. And he put an American pastor, Mr. Brunson, Pastor Brunson, I met him in Izmir briefly when I was there, probably doesn't remember me, put him in prison for a year and a half just for being a Christian. And Erdogan has taken Hagia Sophia, which is Turkish for Hagia Sophia, which is a beautiful big cathedral in Istanbul that has stood for since the year 500, like 1500 years that has stood as one of the tallest cathedrals of Christianity in the world. And last year, Erdogan said, I'm making it into a mosque. Who cares? We have like 200,000 mosques in Turkey and 20,000 in Istanbul. We just need that one too. And he doesn't even allow one church in Ankara, the capital of Turkey. And Turkey has a history of Christianity going back 2,000 years. All of the letters of Jesus to the churches in the book of Revelation, all of them, all six of them are in Turkey. Check it out. Paul did missionary journeys in Turkey, wrote some of the, the letters to the churches, such as to the Ephesians, and that's in Turkey, Ephesus. I check it out. How many of the churches 
in Turkey, Paul wrote to, not just what's in Revelation that John wrote about. They have a huge Christian heritage that Erdogan wants to wipe away because dictatorships and communism will change history as they want. Is that going to happen in America? Are we going to rewrite history? Are we going to change it? Who gets to decide that? Where is freedom of speech, freedom of religion? I don't think I'll take this off. It feels kind of good. Believe me, it looks better on me than without it. I look kind of like pathetic. My hair is just really not a good hair day. But think about it. AOC, please, go live in Turkey. Ilhan Omer, you're Muslim. Cool. You might like Turkey. Why don't you go stay there? You know, really, I'm just saying. You really want America? <laughs> really? AOC, please go live in Turkey. <laughs> Check it out. See how a dictatorship works out for you. Ilhan, you might not like it so much either. Really, please check it out. So this is LLL inviting AOC and Ilhan, please go live in a communist country before you decide we need this in America. Because we have something. We have a history. We have a U.S. Constitution. We have certain rights that are guaranteed to us. Are you going to take them away? Do you have that power? If you do, maybe you are becoming a dictator. Just saying. One more thing from, two more things from Turkey. Nope, one more thing from Turkey. <laughs> My glass. I have this beautiful Turkish tea glass. Um, it's in the shape of a woman's torso. Yeah, boobs up here, waist here, hips down here. I think it's really funny the way that that's so popular to put your tea in a glass shaped like a woman's torso. And then you have little bitty spoons, which I didn't bring my little spoon to stir it and a little tray to put it on. But tea is like really cheap in Turkey. I used to love taking the ferry from the Asian side of Istanbul in Kadikoy all the way across to the European side of Istanbul. Yeah. In, in cartel, which means eagle. We know what that is. Hey, Turkey, I miss you guys. You were actually very friendly to me. And I love your tea and your food. No one can compare to Turkish food, not even Greece. I think Turkey invented it and Greece takes all the credit. Mediterranean diets, Mediterranean diets have been approved as the world's healthiest diets. Recently, I read that. Check it out. I read it in the news. So totally, I miss Istanbul, which is actually located part of it is in asia the continent and part of it is in the continent of europe turkey is not in the middle east turkey is part of europe go figure it doesn't have big deserts and a bunch of camels okay it's not saudi arabia people need to clear that up you know they're like when i went to turkey people are like really you're gonna go ride a camel and be in the desert isn't that awful? And I'm like, hey, you know, have you ever seen photos of Istanbul? And have you ever been to northern Turkey? It looks like Switzerland. It has mountains and trees and lots of snow in the winter. So go check it out, though, because now it has a dictator, and that breaks my heart. And I wrote a book called I Protested for Freedom with Turks, and I got chased by the Turkish police and pepper sprayed. And that's coming to my own country. And I saw what happened on the 6th of January, and all those police setting off firebombs or what a flashbangs, you know, make a big noise and a lot of smoke. I saw that in Istanbul. The Turkish police were setting off flash bombs and big smoke things and pepper spray bombs. And they had pepper spray cannons on top of these vehicles that look like army tanks. You don't want to see an army tank with a uh, pepper spray gun coming towards you. Not a good picture. Or even one that just sprays water and you'll just be sprayed all over the plaza. <laughs> Is that what we want in America? I miss you, Turkey. I miss my friends there. I miss my students. I taught at various universities in the Istanbul area and down in Antalya in the south. And I miss you guys. I miss your food. I miss your tea. Totally, this makes me want to go back.
However, since I wrote, I protested for freedom with Turks with videos. Check out the videos on my channel here that are of Turkey, my, especially my video called Police Attack Tourists in Taksim. Taksim is part of Istanbul. Yeah, watch the police attack the tourists. <laughs> All right, that was so cute. Nice of them. So I wrote that into my book with links to the videos and photos, color photos. And I'm pretty sure that book's been banned by Erdogan. And if I ever showed up at a Turkish airport, he'd probably arrest me. I heard that some Turkish police came to my apartment in Turkey right after I left to go to China for two years. That's what I heard. Do you want to end up in a Turkish jail? Anyone ever see this movie called Midnight Express? Set in Turkey about a guy who went to Turkish prison. Did not work out well for him. And he was just like... He just was carrying like a little marijuana on his body. Whoa, it was like, wow, given the death penalty, which they do in some countries just for marijuana. Well, anyway, you get my drift. So once again, this is Lana Lisa Williams on January 11, 2021, looking forward to a better year than 2020 and hoping that we do not lose our American freedoms because if communism and dictatorships like happened to Russia, and since then, the economy's been trashed. And what happened to China? And since then, they're becoming more and more communist and dictatorial. And they're persecuting people who are Christians also, or Jews, and especially the Uyghur people who are Muslims. And what happened in Turkey, which is under a dictatorship, which does not tolerate Christians. Pastor Brunson was put in for a year and a half, and he was an American pastor and it took that long for President Trump to get him released from prison and a lot of Christians have had to move out of Turkey because they've been arrested and hassled and their biggest cathedral was taken over and made forced to become a mosque in a country that has 200,000 mosques really so do we want that go live there check it out for yourself and get back to me this is Lana Lisa Williams saying goodbye and God bless America.